Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, it is absolutely great to be here. And um, Terry, thank you for those kind words. How about we give her another round of applause for everything she does here at Georgia University? Uh, you know, um, you know, Terry was very kind in her um, her introduction, and uh, you know, in, in the office when uh, when I received some of these recognitions, and really the recognitions are, are on behalf of my organization, Hackensack Meridian Health. Uh, folks in the office are, you know, they get all excited. They they give me high fives, and we uh, we uh, we celebrate a little bit. But I get I'm pretty grounded though, because when I go home in the evening. Um, and I tell my wife that I just got recognized for this or recognized for that for Hackensack Meridian Health. She says to me, um, honey, that's very nice, but tonight is garbage night. Please take out the garbage. <laughs> and my wife is sitting right here, Laura Garrett. Thanks, Laura. Uh, first of all, what a, uh, what a great day uh, we have. Does everybody love the weather or what? It's pretty, a little hot, a little hot, but we'll, we'll take it, we'll take it. I, I won't be too long, so hopefully it won't be uh, too hot. But I have a feeling that uh, the folks at Georgian Court University have uh, some connections with this uh, beautiful weather. It could have been a lot worse. It could have been rainy and cold. Um, so thank you all so very, very much. I am so thrilled to be here today with all of you. It's really a pleasure and an honor to accept this uh, doctorate in health. And uh, before I say anything else, I just want to say one thing. Go Lions! <laughs> uh, before I begin, I'd like to thank uh, a few special people. Uh, first, uh, President Marbach, um, thank you for uh, your hospitality. Thank you for this, uh, this honor. Uh, chairman Upton, it was very nice to, uh, to meet you today. And I know uh, the, the chairman is doing a wonderful job here as well. I want to also um, recognize our, our, our provost here, Provost Warner. Thank you again for, uh, for what you do at Georgian uh, University. And, and I want to thank the, um, the members of the faculty, the deans of the university, and of course the family and friends of our, our graduates. I'd also like to recognize our Hackensack Meridian leaders who play a significant role here at Georgian Court. And you know we have a great partnership with, uh, with Georgian Court. They're here with us today. Our organizations have worked together successfully since 2008 when we launched the nursing program at Georgian Court. Since then, more than 600 students, 600 students have graduated and the program is the fastest growing at this university. I'd like to acknowledge Teresa Broderick, the Chief Nurse Executive for Hackensack Meridian Health, who's also a member of the Board of Trustees here at Georgian Court. Teresa. <laughs> Teresa is a wonderful leader, and um, I have a new nickname for her. I, she's, she always tells it like it is, tells you the straight story. I call her Jersey Direct. So congratulations, Jersey Direct. Also, of course, uh, Terry uh, Wormser, the inaugural dean of the Georgian Court Hackensack Meridian Health School of Nursing. Terry is also vice president for nursing research, grants, and academic affairs at our health network and does a wonderful, wonderful job. So let's give a round of applause to Teresa and Terry. And to the class of 2022, you should be so proud that you reached this milestone. You went through so much to get to this very day. Overcoming the nerves of freshman year, juggling jobs and classwork, and in the last weeks, no doubt, pulling all-nighters. And to the parents, I'm sure you're feeling tremendous pride today. And as the father of two college graduates, I remember those feelings, as well as relief that our children finally crossed the finish line. So parents, I want to thank you for your love and support of these, uh, these amazing young men and women. And a big round of applause for the end of tuition bills. <laughs> Yay, hey. When I graduated from college, uh, well before, I was going to say well before all of you graduates were born, but I understand we have somebody who's 62 that graduated, so I can't say that. But for most of you, I graduated before you were, uh, you were born. And let me paint the scene on my graduation day. You, you were saying it was hot. It was super hot that day. 
I had no idea who the commencement speaker was. I was tired from pulling all-nighters and, yes, celebrating with my friends. I was actually, now please don't laugh, I was actually the keg master at my college, <laughs> a position I was elected to. As a matter of fact, it was my first elective office. I just prayed the commencement speaker would not drag on too long. So graduates, if you don't find my words memorable, I hope you will at least say I was somewhat brief. So here are the lessons I'd like to share with you from nearly 40 years as a healthcare executive, but more important, as a father, as a grandfather, as a husband, as a son, and as a friend. Lesson number one, life is too short to collect a paycheck. As you launch the next cha chapter, dedicate yourself to a mission rather than a job. A mission defines us, it anchors us, it's our de declaration of the difference that we seek to make in this world. When you have a mission, you aren't focused on the next promotion, the bigger paycheck, or the nicer car. You're not crafting a resume. You are crafting your spirit. You are growing your soul. Remember that an impressive job title or a really nice apartment is little comfort when you're sad or lonely or feeling lost. I was lucky to find my mission when I was still in college. I was a struggling political science student. Let's just say I did not have a solid plan, a fact my parents frequently mentioned. I'm sure some of you can relate. So my parents suggested an internship with a family friend, Sister Mary Jean Brady, who ran Mercy Hospital in Rockville Center, New York. I suppose today we would call that an intervention. I was making rounds frequently at the hospital with Sister Mary Jean, and I'll never forget what I saw and what I heard. Nurses soothing anxious patients, doctors and medical staff rushing to emergencies and saving lives, grandparents holding their grandchildren for the first time. And I wanted, no, I actually needed to be part of that mission. As CEO, I no longer work in a hospital every day but I still round in our hospitals. I still stay connected so I never lose my sense of mission. Lesson number two, compare yourself to who you were yesterday, not to who someone else is today. We live in an era, in an era dominated by TikTok and Instagram and other social media. It's changing how we connect or don't connect with each other. There are many upsides, images of friends at weddings, vacations, celebrating birthdays. Social media helps us in many ways in healthcare too. We can spread the word about fundraisers or health screenings that can actually save someone's life. But remember the downside of social media. It can, it can encourage us to compare ourselves to others. It's only human to sometimes feel a little bit smaller when others seem to be moving faster or climbing higher but don't ever compare yourself to anyone else. Former President Theodore Roosevelt put it this way, comparison is the thief of joy. To be happy, you have to create your own path. You cherish the victories and you learn from your mistakes. And I will tell you, in nearly four decades as a healthcare executive and in my personal life, as my wife can attest to, I have learned more from my mistakes than from my successes. When you get discouraged, stop and remind yourself of how far you've actually come. Lesson number three, try to solve your own problems. I heard a great speech from the late General Colin Powell that stayed with me to this very day. He shared a story about his daily meetings with President Reagan in the Oval Office when he was National Security Advisor. General Powell was complaining to the President about how the national security team and the State Department were not working well together. He said he didn't know what to do. The president, in the meantime, was looking out the window for several minutes. President Reagan finally turned around and spoke, and he said, Colin, look, the squirrels came and got the acorns that I left for them in the Rose Garden this morning. President Reagan then left the Oval Office without saying another word. General Powell scratched his head at first and then realized what was happening. President Reagan was sending a message, 
You need to solve your own problems. Trust in your ability to do so. Leadership requires us to have faith in ourselves. It requires us to find solutions. So be bold. Don't transfer your problems up the line. Be accountable. It's what is expected of all of us. Lesson number four, always remember that genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perseverance. I have a great example to share with you. As you heard from Terry, for years, I dreamed of opening a new medical school. I kept hearing from so many experts, medicine is broken. We need a new approach to keep people healthier. People told me it was too hard to start from scratch to reinvent medical education. But I could not get this thought out of my head. If our mission is to transform healthcare, we must start at the beginning in how we train doctors. One that focuses on prevention as much as on healing. It took me nearly a decade to achieve my goal. My idea, my quote unquote flash of genius would never have come to life if I didn't work relentlessly to achieve my goal. Perseverance paid off. We opened the first private medical school in New Jersey in over 60 years. Today, our graduates are serving residencies at Hackensack Meridian Health and other great institutions throughout the nation, including the Mayo Clinic. Our graduates will become compassionate doctors, and I truly believe they will transform healthcare. So in closing, to all of you Georgian Court graduates, Take this magic that you feel today, this sense of accomplishment, this optimism, and find your own mission. Thank you all for having me here to celebrate this great milestone with all of you. And to all of the graduates on this incredibly momentous day, congratulations. I know you're all going to do great things. Thank you, everyone, and enjoy your great celebrations.